Hello everyone and welcome back to that one playthrough of MMORPG Tycoon 2. I am Kyle once again. And today we have a lot of corrections to make unfortunately because I'm a dunce and I get too carried away and excited when I build things or make player classes and enemies and abilities. And therefore, thanks to those of you in the comments who actually have two eyeballs that work, unlike myself, I get to go through and make a few corrections. So first things first is going to be our snaky boys. The first ability here that uh, was an issue is the burrow one here. Now, conceptually, I really liked the way this worked. Give them a protect because they're in theory going underground and then they're going to burst out and deal damage. And when they're underground, you can't deal any damage to them. So they'd have 100% protect. However, this is self cast only, meaning that they're giving themselves 100% protect and then they're dealing three damage to themselves, which is not necessarily what I wanted to happen. Unfortunately, if I make it so that it is not self only and it's melee, meaning that they could deal the damage to somebody else, it means when these enemies attack a player character, they're actually gonna give the player character the 100% protect. So this ability doesn't actually work with the limitations of MMO uh, Tycoon 2. So we kind of have to make a few corrections in that. Everything else though, so like the quicksand ability, the body slam, twin fang, those all work as they should, they're just damage abilities. So two things to kind of think about with this. One, do I just want to make it the protect? And I think that's what I might do at first. So if we get rid of the damage and just make it a three second protect at 100%, cool. It means that for that time period though, our rational worms are gonna be able to deal other damage kind of while they're in that protect. So from a more lore realistic animal perspective that doesn't really work, but I'm just gonna let it roll. I do want the protect. So for three seconds when they do burrow, you can't do anything to them, but they'll utilize some of their other stuff, which is okay. So they've got two damaging abilities, a debuff in the slow, and then a buff for themselves in the protect from burrow. So that's that. The other one I think I need to look at is actually the Severian uh, Fighter's Sword Thrust, because if we deal damage to it and generate rage, I think what it actually does is it's gonna make the animal you attack generate rage, which is not what I actively want to have happen. I, I, I'm i gonna experiment with this and see kind of with the player class in a second here, but I, I, I'm pretty sure this is gonna deal damage to your enemy and give your enemy rage. If they don't have a rage bar, then it doesn't matter, uh, but it, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna generate rage for the actual player like I intended it to be. In my head, it was like, oh yeah, this is what it's gonna do, but obviously, because we are targeting an enemy and not ourself. We're not gonna be the ones generating the rage and obviously we don't wanna target ourselves because we don't wanna deal damage to ourselves at the same time. So basically what this means is I need to do a better job of double checking things when I build them so that I'm actually applying it to the correct target. The other thing I'd like to do today is really, 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 really buckle down on getting our players to advance a little bit further. We're gonna take a big step back away from kind of the whole landscape building regions thing and, and just glimpse at where we are in the total development of our game. So right now we've got about 5,600 level one players, about uh, almost 5,000 level two, that's pretty good. I know somebody in the comments said they wanted to see how many level two pl and three players were active now. Here you go, you can see it. This is good though, it means there's a good number of them that are actively uh, leveling up. The other thing real quick, we're gonna look at features. I'm gonna disable parties again, because as we know from the last time we did that, it actually made players start to level up faster because they would actually go and turn in quests. So if I go ahead and sit here and play this real fast, you'll see the number of people now going over to complete a lot of these quests is pretty high. So we should start to see that uh, the level scaling go up quicker now as well. The other side that I think I realized with parties is when you do parties, I think all the parties move at a movement speed either equal to whoever the slowest player class is or it's just kind of a generic set number, I'm not sure. I was trying to find some info on the Discord on it, it wasn't super clear, but now if we make sure that every player can actively move at the movement speed that their player class should move at, I believe we'll start to see this progress a little bit quicker now too. So I'm gonna let the game play out really fast kind of while we're doing stuff today, just because uh, not necessarily the money side of things, that's one piece of it, but I want to get some leveling going. I want players to start venturing out 
The number of level 3 players we actively have means there should be a couple of people out here in Eastwash. They might not be logged in, so we might not see them right away. But there are at least six, uh, six players I think we just saw that were level 3. Oh, there's one that just ran by. Let's see if we can chase that guy, guy down. Uh, they probably move faster than we do with the camera. I wasn't sure if I just saw them again. It might be hard to chase down. However, we know there are some in here. Yeah, we've got at least six of them that are level three. They should all be in Eastwash doing stuff there now. So hopefully we get that number to jump up a little bit further even once uh, people start leaving out of here. So I think it's kind of worth noting what all of our tiers are at. Right now we still, people still want to nerf the wizard. They still want to nerf the uh, fighter. Uh, Paladins actually look pretty balanced. They're bees though also. The ranger is an only one at an A tier, 504 nerf requests. Well, I guess fighters are A tier. So yeah, this is, it's tough because they're calling for a nerf, but I want them, I want them to be at a good tier. I don't want anyone to be at S. S is too good, too OP. A I think is healthy. B is okay too, so I'm not too upset with this in the long term. I would like the Paladin be a little stronger so you could be A, but I don't want people to be demanding nerfs as well. So it's a weird, it's a weird thing. I'm not sure how all of the background data comes to these conclusions within the game, but hopefully we can start to play around this with uh, fixing it a little bit more. And then the other thing here, we got an upgrade, so we'll go ahead and throw this up. This is gonna take us to 9.9, .9, so this is one of our big ones. Uh, there's a couple of things in here that I have not really understood. Um, obviously this says not implemented yet, so I can't really apply it. I could select it, but clearly uh, the game devs haven't uh, created whatever the arenas are gonna be, which is fine, because they've got other things they're working on. The dungeons update, whenever that comes out, I'm pretty excited for, but I know, uh, I know in the Discord they're constantly talking about the work they're putting into it, so excited to see what they do. I'm not in any hurry for it. I'd rather they do it right, get a good product delivered in that update so we can all enjoy it. Some things we can do though, instant messages will get us more hugs. Uh, badges would be good for kind of those players who like to get accomplishments and achievements. Gibbs, uh, hmm, not implemented yet. I guess in terms of by not implemented, they mean there's no physical component for it to build in the game or actually see, but it still does apply to some of those RPG components within the game of getting us the plus five Gibbs. Not sure. Uh, faction history that'll add fluff. That's that's kind of cool. I mean, I've kind of built out some of that stuff on my own. Ultimately, I, I kind of want teleporters because I want to experiment with this for certain things like bridges and tunnels. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do it, but I think there's a way I could create bridges from a visual standpoint with the scenery items and then have players kind of pass over chasms, rivers, lakes through the teleporter so you wouldn't actually see them walk across the scenery bridge, but you can kind of like in air quotes make it happen. I'll, 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 I'll select this for now. This is a big release, obviously. I won't use a ton of teleporters yet because I don't want players to be able to go from one side of the map to the other instantaneously, but I would like to see if it util can be utilized for some of these like minor scenery ideas that I have. The other thing that's kind of come up is I, the limitation of how many active players can be in this first zone. Now, somebody asked like why we're not seeing that many. You know, there's 600. I think I've seen it peak about 800. There can be a lot more than that inside of Brightwood. Part of it could be the in space. I'm not 100% sure. If we select this though, we've got full residence, so we are at capacity. And if we think about the number of level one and two players, it's gonna be upwards of like 10,000 people, so we don't have the space for it. So I'm gonna have to kind of figure that out. And I don't know if this number limits how many people can actively be playing the game and be active online. It's, it's very highly questionable. I don't know the mechanics well enough and I can't find enough information. But what we can do is utilize some of the space that I have available to kind of hide things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some ends. It will be a little expensive, but money's not really an issue right now. What I wanna do is find the ends that are gonna give me the most space. Now the small inn I know has a limitation. I believe, I believe like, some of these are kind of the same. So like the Coastal Inn, the Coastal Inn has a capacity of a thousand. The Civilized Inn, like the large one, 
I don't know if I've built one of these before, and I don't know if it says or tells me what the capacity is. Uh, just says limited number of players. It is. It does cost the same as the other end, so maybe those are those are a thousand also. This one's cheaper, the corrupted inn and the small inn. And the small inn, I put one of them in East Wash way over here. Residence 200, so that's significantly less actually. So what I should do, and let's actually look, there's one over here too. This is kind of the Sylvan style elegant one. This has a thousand, okay. So what I need to try and do is find the smallest asset of inn that can produce a thousand capacity so that I can start to hide them in some of the scenery like large trees and rocks I've got around here. So the warlike one, that's pretty big. This one's kind of tall. Oh shoot, I didn't want to do that. All right, lucky for us, we've got the power of periodic saves, so we don't really have to worry about the fact that uh, I just deleted everything. So what I need to do, as I was saying, was find a type of inn that is gonna be small enough to hide in stuff, both in height, stature, and overall width. Actually, this one's pretty good. It's like nice and short. A lot of these are really tall. The small inn is good, however, it is only capacity 200, so. I think this is my best option, kind of this little this little one like I've already hidden in this uh, tree. So what we need to do is find a spot where I'm not gonna delete any scenery. I'm gonna produce a bunch of these. So if I add four, that's gonna bring our capacity up an additional 4,000. So it'll bring it to about 6,600 something, which is still not enough for the amount of people in this area. Let's see where we can hide these first off because ultimately I want to put them near where other inns are so it kind of makes sense why people would be kind of over there. But I don't want them to be visible in the sense that uh, visible in the sense that there's another building next to it. So like hopefully people will start heading that direction into that rock. We'll just ignore the fact that people are running inside of a rock. Yeah, people are already coming over to these because they're trying to get the, the space. Oh man, what have we done? All right, so I'm gonna grab over here if I can. It's gonna be tough because it's gonna interfere with that building itself. So we need to kind of, yeah, the, the hitboxes are gonna, not hitboxes, that's kind of the wrong word, but the, uh, the actual building space. Maybe if I, can I, can I, if I can find a spot where I can build it. So it's not interfering with the other one, but it still kind of almost makes sense. Yeah, not really, it's tough. This tree's like not really big enough. Hold on, let's try this. Let's let's kind of put this back over here. And then I'm gonna straight up grab, there's, I think there's two trees here technically. So I grab one of them go precise move and I increase the size what does that do up here on top not really anything bad that's good okay if I do that and then let's try to move it in a position where it doesn't interfere with the visuals we've created for this other one like so and then let's take this tree maybe increase its size just a smidge Take it out this way, like so. Maybe drop it so the roots make sense. Yeah, okay, go like that. Now let's see with a bigger sized uh, spacing there, if I can get like another building in here, kinda. If I go like this, it's gonna shift the ground, shift the tree. That works. Now it looks like uh, basically the same building has two entrances. That's kind of what I wanted to go for there. Okay, so we got uh, two of those down now in a spot where they can live. Let's grab these. I guess the other question is, is there any room in this one rock-wise? Kinda. I could find a spot like that. Now that's gonna shift the earth. Let's see if I can take this rock. If I move it this way, how far can I go? Ooh, that still hides the other one. Okay, yeah, that works. Okay, so actually we gotta go this way. There's a plant sticking out. Make sure everything looks good. Yeah, okay. 
So we got two more ends in here. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. What is, what is that? Oh, that's just a person's icon. They got a bug, okay. Anyways, two ends in there, two ends there. So we just increased capacity quite a bit. Let's grab this fourth one. And maybe, can I get one in here maybe? Does shift the earth a little bit. Okay, that'll that'll work. There's gonna be people awkwardly walking toward that rock now, but again, we'll just ignore it. Okay, so now the capacity is 6,600 for residents. We should start to see that climb quickly. I, again, I don't know if that's gonna help the number of players online at any given moment, but if it means more people can be online and more people are actively trying to level up, then maybe this whole thing works faster. Let's go ahead and go back to fast speed. I don't know if there's anywhere else that really looks like we could hide a inn in a place where we're close to town or something. Obviously, this is an inn. This is a small one, so it doesn't have a lot of capacity to begin with. I don't really want to make this a bigger inn, because if it was civilized, it'd have more capacity, but I don't want this big of a building out here. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it would kind of feel out of place. I could, in theory, add another small inn here and kind of put uh, another one here, maybe, but 400 $400 cost for an additional 200 residents ultimately isn't that worth it. 200 residents isn't gonna really make a dent in the uh, issue we're having at the moment. All right, there's a lot of ghosts here. Are people dying to the spiders? Monster deaths? Uh, hmm. The ratio of player deaths to monster deaths is shifting. Pl uh, player deaths hasn't gone down very much, but monster deaths have gone down significantly. I guess the question then is, players die just as much, but they can't kill as many spiders. That's not really a good thing. Hmm. Keep an eye on this one. It's a little worrying. And look at that. We've already got uh, another like 400 people almost to level two, another four people into level three. So let's hope that uh, everyone gets their stuff together and continues moving right along. All right, so as I said, what I actively want to do here too is test out a fighter. So we're going to go ahead and hit a hard pause here. Uh, let's find a fighter who's wandering around that we can take control of. Do not see any fighters. Where are all the fighters? Oh, there's one right here. All right, we're going to take control of this guy. And what the goal is going to be here right from the start is we're going to figure out if the sword thrust ability actively generates rage like it should. So. Spiders have mana, they don't have rage, so I won't actually give them any rage, but when I attack this spider, I should be dealing one damage to it, and as a result, I should generate rage based on the attack, which is one, but I should also be gaining rage over time. Now, when they attack me, I'm gonna gain rage as well. So unfortunately, it looks like the ability in order to gain rage over time is not actively working like it should. So confirmation there. I'm only gaining rage from the actual attack that I'm doing and from the damage that I'm taking from the spider. Also, this uh, this zone keeps kind of phasing in and out of working properly, which is annoying. Maybe it would be better if I didn't have as many spiders. I mean, right now it's on normal. What does light look like? I don't know if that actively changes uh, how much bandwidth it takes. That is a little problematic. I mean, bandwidth usage is actually really close to capping. Maybe, I mean, that's got to have a lot to do with the amount of players in the area too, I'm assuming, plus the amount of combat regions. I mean, maybe I need more bandwidth. I know some of it's being shared with Eastwash. We made Zephyr its own region, which is going to be good for it. However, we're spending money on it and there's no players there at the moment. There is one connection over here, which is kind of helping but then a lot of it over here is being shared. And then our total number of logged in users is up to 1,200 available for that region. We haven't hit that capacity either. I mean, I feel like more people should be allowed to play the game at one given time. I guess the question is, why is that not the case? Somebody help me answer that question. Another thing I'm just realizing, I was going around checking all the quest givers to see how many quests had been completed. So Gil Bezalel, is giving out quests, people are completing them. However, I when I checked down here to our guy at the beach, and I think I might have commented on this at one other point, but um, this guy has no quests given out. No one has done that quest at all. And if I click back on Gil, I realize he no longer has the quests assigned that he gives out to send people down here. So 
we need to add this in, and it's not gonna be fight the bandits. We're gonna send you to this guy. And I don't even remember what this was called originally. I'm just gonna say, search the beach camp. And I don't want this to necessarily give too much experience. We're gonna say 250 and no gold. Um, Cause this was in the original stuff that I calculated out the experience for this region. So I do wanna make sure that this is something that's still in here. So now that that's there, we should get him. Yeah, just like that, sending people over to do this quest now, which is actually gonna open up people to start doing the quest that's over here to take on those bandits and to take out the bandit leader over there. Otherwise, people are just kind of doing it for fun at the moment. Um, the other thing to check out here is, are people actively doing this quest? It looks like, actually, yeah, they are. Okay, so he is giving out a couple. Uh, not a lot of completions, but I do know that the bears are a lot more difficult to fight. So, something to keep in mind is uh, what the death toll is over here. And it looks like it's kind of fluctuated a little bit. I think that's... That's going to be, I think, dependent over here based on parties. I think the bears are really strong. And when players are in parties, you get this more monster deaths versus player deaths. And right now, it's kind of starting to equal out because players have to solo the bears. So the bears might be a little tough. So let's go into the bears on design. Let's make them a little tankier. I know that defeats the purpose slightly. It is not the same as nerfing. But we'll make them a little tougher to beat. The damage on this, that's actually not too bad. Let's go 0.5 second cast, so it brings down the total DPS. Maul takes a lot of rage, so they're not going to be able to do it very often, but these are level 1 characters, so 3 damage is a lot. I'm going to take this down to a flat 2, and actually, I'm going to take the cast time up as well. So that one's not done as often, and then Enrage allows the bear to generate rage. 10 rage over 8 seconds. Let's go 10 rage over 10 seconds. So that there's only one per second opposed to the, I guess, 1.2-ish per second that it would have been. My math's probably off, but that's whatever. Okay, so a little bit of DPS nerf, but make them a little tankier. I think we'll kind of see where that goes. It's probably going to end up being almost even trade-off. But uh, let's, let's double check on that later. We're going to keep the time playing at a really fast pace so that we can start to get this data. Okay, and then over here are bandits. Um, this, yeah, this is actually appropriate. So you can see these dips. That's probably where we had solo playing, so there was no parties. And then where there's more monster deaths, less player deaths, those are the points where parties were enabled. We're going to see these kind of pinch a little bit and get closer again now that there's no parties. But I think the bandits are at a pretty healthy state. Let's do the same thing with the skeletons. Yeah, you can see the same thing. There's going to be a pinch. They're closer together. That's going to be when players had to do things solo. There's more of a gap when they're in parties. And we're going to see that pinch come through again. This feels okay. This was a little bit more of a swarm area. So the, the skeletons are not hard. And these are level 2 as well. So realistically, based on their total health, if it's 4, um, you know, at level... Level 2, they're going to have 6 health. Most of our player classes should be able to one-shot these guys with a full round of abilities. Unless they're getting hit by like, you know, 3 skeletons at once. That's a little bit annoying. And then I guess our level 2 skeleton, uh, not skeletons, level 2 fighters. Oh yeah, you can really see. Holy moly, that is a quite a drastic graph. That shows you exactly how hard the spiders are at level two when you're by yourself that's actually this is this is bad this is really bad so hold on when they're level one at level one you can see that pinch where they get closer that's where they're soloing this is where parties are that's pretty balanced i'd say meaning that the level one abilities the spit which is the slow and the mana debuff and then the piercing venom which is just a little bit of damage over time this is not that hard for our player classes to deal with. The issue, I guess, now comes up when they hit level 2. At level 2, when they get the web lock, players can now not escape. It means the damage over time is also higher too. But it really shouldn't be that much to deal with. Man, I, I can't figure out... That's... I mean, this is obviously showing there's an issue when players have to solo a level 2 spider. 3 second locked in place. 
during that time frame, damage over time would end up being 3.8 damage over 5 seconds. In theory, when things scale up, it shouldn't be a problem. So it's the level 2 ability that creates the issue. Because I think players are no longer able, they're no longer able to kite them. Okay, we're going to do a heavy nerf here. And I'm going to say this is a 1 second root in place. We'll still do only every 10 seconds, but I'm going to make it a little bit easier to cast on them. So 1.5 mana. Yeah, and let's see how well that helps. Because I really, I mean, clearly we have to nerf that a bit. That's fascinating. This graph is giving me a lot of info. That's really cool. I guess the same could be said for the level 2 bandits now that I see this. So the level 2 bandits kind of have the same issue. Actually, I should take a step back here mentally, because it could be that a lot of those deaths are coming from players who are level 1 and trying to come into these level 2 combat regions. That could actually be the majority of the issue. And I don't think there's any way for me to, to see that data-wise. Yeah, because if level 1 players are coming in here and they're getting stomped on, then clearly it's going to skew all of the data. So I don't want to do too much here. I'm okay with nerfing that web lock like I did, but like what I should do is select these players and see like this guy is a level two wizard. This guy is level one paladin. Uh, let's see, let's grab, like this guy's getting teamed up on. Level two ranger, he's, he's definitely gonna die. This wizard is level one. He's gonna die probably, unless he can keep on kiting. Nope, he's dead, okay. This ranger's level one. Yeah, if they're level one and dying to level two spiders, I don't feel so bad. And the reason when there was parties, they had so many more monster deaths than player deaths is because players could actively team up with other level one players. Okay, don't overthink it. Moving on. All right, and here we go. Now we finally have more level two players than level one players. This is what we want to see. So that, that transition is starting to happen. However, level two still keeps them within the first region here. I think in hindsight, what I should have done was had a level one region that was a lot smaller and tried to move players into the next region as quick as possible for a level two. Kind of creates a little bit of an issue for us, but uh, we're just gonna manage it as it stands right now. The reason I made this multiple levels is because it's so big, Brightwood is pretty huge. If all of our other regions are also single levels, it means that players I mean, they'll be there for the entire level, but I'm hoping that the time frame stays the same. The amount of time you spend in Eastwash is the same amount of time you would spend in Zephyr because granted it takes more experience, but the quests are worth more experience. Kind of just a weird linear numbers game when you kind of think about it. Should look at uh, this guy here. He's got a lot of quests he's given out. Nope, that's a player. Where is the quest giver? Give me the quest giver. There we go. Oh, hey, look, this actually is it's actually got the opposite correlation to the player deaths in those other pools compared to when parties were enabled. So you can see when parties were enabled, less quests were given out. When we disable parties like we do now, we're actually getting more quest completion. That's fascinating. All right, well, we're learning lots of valuable things today. Oh, well, we do have a lot of bugs going on right now. Bugs and help tickets. I should maybe start to look into more of that as well. There's only one GM we have active. He seems to be handling things pretty quickly they are a salary of 300 they cost 500 to hire it's actually not that bad to get some help there and then as far as developers these guys dev task backlog active dev tasks i think that's like activating certain things like activating buildings and regions and zones and that kind of thing bug fixes as well so having two of them has actually been kind of necessary the help tickets are already down again Let's keep an eye on this. If they get kind of crazy high, then uh, then we'll think about that. Region overloaded. Yeah, because we're only allowed 1,200 people in the region. Now we got to start thinking about this again, because I built one of these. A server helped increase the overall capacity, because we can only have 1,200 users logged in. If we could get more users logged in, that would actually help. The region is full of residents now, too. It's getting overloaded, but it's not hitting its capacity, so I don't know if I need to worry about it. If it hit 1200 and it was bouncing around there, I'd be worried. There's no login queue, so I don't think I need to worry about this quite yet. Oh, there it just jumped up again. Okay. Maybe we do need another one. Let's let's do this. We're going to temporarily add another server. Oh gosh, 10,000, that's expensive. If it comes down to it later on, maybe we can uh, move them to another location. So let's attach some cable. 
kind of go and connect these. Let's kind of merge that to there as well. Okay, it says region overloaded still. What what am I doing wrong? Is this can I only have one of these in per location? Is that how it works? Oh wait, hold on. Maybe it just turned on, or it's having no. It's it's consuming bandwidth. So we actually need we actually need more bandwidth then, huh? Well, heck. Okay, it means we need another uplink. I've got two of them now. We're having an issue over here with this spider zone, so maybe I just create another one over here. Put it. Uh, hmm. Maybe I just drop it right in the middle over here. Put that there. And then we'll connect to there. Let's see, there is another pipeline there, so we'll do that. Okay, that should actually help that that uh, spider spot, the enemies, from deactivating like it has been. Yeah, now we've got a capacity of 1600, so that's activated now. So now I can have more people actively in here. Not that we're hitting that capacity at the moment again. It shouldn't be an issue now. When we get to the point where Brightwood has people leaving it consistently and we don't need that capacity anymore, then what we'll probably do is see if we can move those servers to other regions where they're going to actively be needed. Okay, things things are coming together. It's all starting to make sense now. And we're almost up to 12,000 subscribers, which actually means we probably have a lot of these unlocked. Yeah, we can, we can make a lot of enemies if we wanted to, but I want to save them for a lot of the other regions that we'll do later on. All right, so there's 28 people that should be over in Eastwash now. Kind of want to scour around and see if we can find any of them. See if people are doing things. Like, is there residents in here? Yeah, we got 16 residents there. That's good. Is anybody utilizing this one over here? No, nobody's a resident there. Maybe some people are over at the... Loudfoot Estate. Nope, nobody's a resident there. Okay, well that's interesting. There's 28 people level 3, they might be staying at a, somewhere in Brightwood still, and they're on their way migrating into this region? Who knows? Oh, there's one right there. Wait, 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 hold on. Okay, there we go. Slow it down. Who is this guy? Gra Graia? Gra? Gria? I don't know how to say that, but uh, yeah, okay, cool. We got players over here. Level 3 Fighter of Zephyr. 3,000 experience already into this level. That's pretty good. They are, they're headed to the end. Perfect. Okay, so they're going to go up there. Don't know if they're going to log out or not. Setting a new home. They're thinking now. Getting quest. Okay, what quest are you getting? Phase through the tree and talk to this guy. Sweet. All right, going to spend some time talking to Thule. And then they are getting sent. Oh, they're going to go socialize. Really? You just got a quest and you're like, nope, gonna go, gonna go socialize, gonna go talk to people. Not gonna enjoy this beautiful region I've just moved to. Screw that. And I really went crazy in here with all the bushes, didn't I? I mean, I knew I did a lot, but like, man, I really, I really did not uh, commit myself to anything else in life. Okay, their pathing looks like it's, it's going off into the river. Why are you going off into the river? They're going up here. It's pathing them to here, all the way around, because this is a chasm. So they can't go in the chasm, but they can walk in the ocean. So he's literally pathing all the way across, around in the ocean to get to the other side. Wow. Okay. I'm not gonna ask. Okay, well, we'll continue to let this stuff play out a bit more, because it's only gonna help us gather more data. We continue to get these levels going up. That is the priority at the moment. While we're doing that though, we are gonna talk about this bad boy right here. Yes, everybody, it's true. The, the poll is over, as most of you know that participated. And the winner of the next region is in fact gonna be this block, big blocky boy, kind of hourglass shaped to some extent. This is gonna be part of our road to Valkrin, and it will be uh, progressing the main plot quest uh, to kind of go in this direction, give or take. Won't give anything away as far as which one of these regions will actually contain our capital city, but it will be over in that direction. So the first things first that we need to do, again, this is going to be a mountainous region. I'm going to make it like a mountain pass. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to, 
I'm gonna smoothen the whole thing out because I made it a mountain just so people would understand when they were we were doing the voting what we were looking at but I'm gonna flatten it all out for the time being okay just like that now I'm not gonna keep these ice crystals those just popped up on their own but I do want to look at what our entrance looks like here so it kind of comes from a slightly higher altitude it drops down a little bit we will play around with that to some extent I'm not gonna keep this all ice what I would like is there to be like kind of a an introductory section that kind of comes through here so I know there's a little bit of snow here but what I'm gonna do is make the edge here just field now it's not gonna stay like this but I do want to take advantage of this kind of transitional strip here where you can see that the snow kind of actually fades into the grass and we're gonna use that to kind of make an area where it's like you know there's areas that aren't quite covered in snow when you first get in here and it's a little patchy and then the other side of this is we want it to feel like you're entering a mountain pass right from the start and I want to make sure that one this feels appropriate so as you're kind of walking through here we're gonna to have to add a lot of scenery because these these areas that are meant to be the transitions between regions they don't give you a ton of control uh, over some other you know just the way it feels in terms of what the ground is on the ground it just kind of gets this generic rock look to it so we're gonna go like this our mountain and we're gonna kind of feed this along here and I want to make sure yeah just like this there is a, a, a mechanism in place to allow us to create a slope down I don't like the way the path here is forced to hit this little bump. I'm not, I'm not too fond of that. Do want to create some snow on the sides here. Kind of do that. There we go. Yeah, that, that actually that might be the smarter way to do this is create the snow there, and then up along section here. So that way you start to get some transition and the snow region actually looks like it creates a higher altitude it pushes the ground up a little bit yeah there's there's some slope there even though it's not necessarily maybe yeah okay actually that's good yeah a little bit of grass transitioning to snow there and then we can have the mountain on the side here now what i might want to do is put the snow closer this way I want to have a little bit of an open space here and then I'll take the mountains and kind of bring them not all the way covering up where the snow is so we still have this kind of transitional piece oh, that might have been too far I don't like that maybe go a little closer and then let's just get rid of this thing. Yeah, so that way we've got a mountain pass that clearly has snow, but when you're lower in the pass here, think of this as, you know, elevation's gonna scale up as the player makes it through this kind of mazy formation that we'll make through here. We'll kind of have the transition, so there's gonna be just snow after a given point, and then it gets really crazy. So we'll have this region of mountains stay there. Let's have a section jet off of here like so and then now that creates a little bit of an upward mound and then you're going to kind of come up here this narrow spot and then we'll have it continue this direction a little bit so this first section is going to be really maze like it's not really a maze like i don't players won't get lost the pathing the way the pathing in the game works like players will be able to figure it out and it's going to be more or less railroading them that direction anyways. So to kind of start like this, have it be like the start of a really like rugged path. And then we'll kind of have it swing around. And I want to have an open area. So what we'll do is we'll kind of have this kind of go this way, but then curve. So we have a bigger kind of open flat patch of snow. We'll have areas obviously where we're gonna try and have some type of, not, not major cities, this will not have any cities, 
but little a little community like a mountain village uh, that maybe works on like fur trades or something like that lumber mills that kind of thing so let's have this there let's get this to be mountain again here so we get that kind of higher higher piece transition we'll have this be a little bit of a narrow slot that's those are strange spikes and then we'll have a little like outlet in here where we can hide some stuff as well then what I want to do is I want to have a piece that jets off really what I should do is let's make sure we get snowy mountain tops here so we'll put it along the edge so that no matter where you are kind of moving down the main path here you still are gonna look up and see snowy mountains on each side so we'll do that we'll do the same thing along here like so and this is not going to connect to this region over here it's not going to connect here or over here it's all going to be one way all the way through this and this is mostly going to be just you know you get through Saphir as a level four player you're going to hit level five this will be a level five zone and pretty much as you progress through it by the time you get to the end you should should hit level five or sorry yeah you should hit level six and that'll transition to the next one the way I want to design this is I'm going to take this out to here. And then let's close off the ends here so we got those snowy mountains. And I'm not sure where the actual transition will be, but kind of leave part of that corner open. This is then going to go, let's see, we're going to have portions here like so. And what I want to have is... We're gonna make an area where players won't be able to pass here, but I'm gonna utilize this to potentially get either an airship or one of the hot air balloons through this section. Uh, we'll have something that'll be an option to kind of go through here without having to go through the region, so that if we have quests later on that go from other spots back through to have to go to Saphir or other areas, we'll have a transport mechanism that goes through here, but we're gonna make it really expensive so that these lower level players can't kind of just like cheat their way across it. They could, I guess, but if they had the money and grinded for it, but if they're level six at this point, they should be ultimately, or sorry, level five rather, they should be going into this region to take advantage of that. So we're gonna create some, I'm gonna create some kind of cool areas that that stuff goes through, but at the same time, I wanna create only a singular path for the players, block it off with a fence, and then we'll cover up with some rocks and then we'll kind of create the path that the, uh, larger vehicles will be able to kind of fly through the mountain passes with a little more ease which kind of makes me think i want to do the same sort of thing right here now that i think about it so i'm going to flatten this Oop, i'm going to flatten this back out like so let's grab the field one more time so we kind of bring that grass back in grab a mountain Uh, that kind of almost works. Not quite. Let me try again. Yeah, that's better. It's low enough that the airships won't do one of those big bob and weave jump up and downs things. And then we'll cover this with a, a, a fence so players won't pass through it. And then we'll cover up some rocks to kind of make it look like there's just the ability for an airship to kind of sneak through there. And then that way the airship can kind of go this way and cut out this whole zigzag section. It'll kind of go this way and then it'll cut up here and then we'll give it a path to kind of go all the way through wherever, wherever the end will be which maybe i should kind of think about i'm obviously it's gonna have to come out into this region so maybe really quick since i've got a boatload of cash now and a net worth that's positive for once we're gonna buy this go into the levels and i'm just gonna make it 20 so people stay away from it uh, same thing with this one that's not gonna be a level six region Actually, this this will be a six, so we'll kind of go like that. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one yet. Yeah, I think that's the best case scenario, which means this, this will probably be a five when it gets activated. Four down here still. In fact, some of these realistically, like this might be a five, six, this might be a, a six, seven actually. We'll go like that. This one maybe this one will be a four, just like severe. Go ahead and purchase this one as well, just so I can kind of map things out in my head a little bit. 
This one will probably be like a 5-6 as well. Although, do I need both of these to be? Actually, I know, what I, I know exactly what I'll do. We're going to make this a 4-5 combo. Because I'm going to probably, based on the way I'm thinking things through lore perspective-wise and what these regions are going to be, we're going to go between these two regions to kind of go 4 to 5 and then into 6. I can connect these two, so this could in theory be a 5-6 that also combos with quests in this region. And it all depends on what direction we end up going first. Because if I find that I don't need to have this many 4-5-6 spots, because right now there's a ton of them, we can kind of modify things over time. I think this has to be a 5 because I do kind of want it to be somewhere you could go after Zephyr. This one maybe, I mean I can go 5-6-7 there even potentially. I don't know, we'll think about it. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Okay, now to see what we want to do kind of with this space down here. I mean, this is really wide and open and I could kind of keep it that way, but I think uh, to my point, it's probably necessary to kind of figure out where we want our path to run. And because these are so long and straight when you build them, I don't want it to be tucked away in the corner and have part of it get lost up in here. So. I mean, we could, actually I could go like this, because this is all the same region here, this is long. So maybe if I point it that direction like that, yeah, that, that probably actually works better. So I'll do that. So it's gonna kinda come in in one corner and then you have to make your way through sort of a labyrinth that's more or less one direction and then have them finish out uh, somewhere over here. I think there should be a little bit of a open area so let's kind of take this and I'm going to bring it out a little bit, kind of like that. So there's a little bit of a pass here. And maybe through this area, we kind of do make it a little bit more like they've got to navigate through sections. So let's kind of take a weird shapes here. We'll kind of make some pockets where we can kind of have quest lines kind of go in and out of. Let's have this kind of go out this direction like so and I think as long as this is yeah this is all manageable to some extent so if we go like that maybe create like some mountainous island kind of formation here that way again we utilize this to create those pockets where there's visual obstructions like the players can go this way but there's kind of not really anything over there the main path will kind of take them this direction through here, then go that way or that way. This will kind of just loop around to the same spot. Yeah, I think that's simple, but good enough to where there's still gonna be a lot of room to be able to throw things in here. So I think our mountain village will kind of be maybe over here, or maybe it should kind of be on the path. It's more or less up for debate, I guess. Yeah, maybe here, so that way you feel like you don't have to go too far into the region and then you meet up with some people, a place where there's an inn. Maybe we make a small inn in this corner, kind of, for like a, whether whether it's some kind of business or industry that's throughout it, I'm not quite sure. We should probably have an inn early on. We'll probably have a bigger inn or a couple of inns situated here to kind of have a little village area. We'll kind of scatter stuff around. Maybe there's an inn where we place like a, like a side quest giver of some kind. But then we need to have some areas where it's like, okay, you really can't get through portions of this without being in danger. And then ultimately, when we kind of have a, and I'm not sure if I'll do an airship or a balloon, it'll be one of the two, but it'll kind of come in through this area, go up this way around, it'll get a shortcut here, zig through here, and then zag its way out that direction. Maybe we should kind of put that in now. Actually, that sounds like not a bad idea. So I have, I know I have the two airships over here. I have two airship depots here, but again, I let's experiment with the balloon. I kind of like the idea of the balloon going through the mountain region. Don't ask me why, just it's the way my brain's working. So let's go make the hot air balloon depot. We'll get rid of the second half. I'm not gonna build it yet so that we can move this inside of the rock like we have with the other ones. Spin this around, maybe so it's on. Well, let's see, do we go... Let's try and go on the back side over here to start with. We'll kind of situate it uh, 
Uh, yeah, like that's actually not too bad. And that messes with the ground a little bit, but that's okay. It doesn't mess with our pillar here. Then we can grab the second half. Let's see. Yeah, go there. And then, ooh, it kind of starts way off in the distance there, but that shouldn't be maybe too much of a problem. We'll have it kind of go out to here. Actually, let's go, let's have it come to here, and then we can loop straight in so we don't have to make too many turns to like, well, let's see. If I go like that, where is that? Uh, that'll have to go up a little bit. Hmm. Maybe I do need to have two pivot points. So let's go like that, and then we'll go like that, and then we can kind of come straight through here. And that might actually, yeah, then we can go straight all the way to here. And oh, let's go a little shorter to there, because it'll curve. And then let's have it kind of go past these mounds. I don't want it to go on top. Maybe I'm not far enough here. Hold on, let's go there. We can get rid of that big ice pylon to go to there. That's not good. Let's go right there. That'll curve right in between there to there. Through to here, to here, and then I'm thinking like all the way out kind of. So let's go to here, and then it'll go straight out. I don't want it again to go, yeah, I don't want it to go over the mountains like that. So let's go kind of cutting through. And then this kind of needs to end so that it's I feel like it's just going through the mountain region. We don't need it to cut across too much, because again, I don't know 100%. Actually, I do, actually, I kind of want it to go around here. And, oh, actually, that's the end of it. That's as far as it'll let me go anyway. So maybe we just do have it end. Oh, we'll take this segment of it to here, and then we'll have that come out over here along the side of this hill like that so it's actually yeah it's running the balloon now so that's good yeah I like I like that aesthetically it's gonna travel along all these mountainsides through that little pass through that little pass it's doing a little bit of up and down but it's not that bad and then it kind of finishes yeah, okay, that's perfect. So we've got our segment that's gonna go through the mountain pass, and we're gonna make this really expensive because I, I ultimately don't want people to do it. So for the time being, I'm just gonna make it a thousand gold, and we'll kind of do that. Okay, now, kind of the last piece I wanna work on today is our main path. So I figure if I build this early on right now, Ooh, I don't like how long I have to make that. Let's start it down here. Kind of find the base of the segment here. And let's go up like this. We're gonna kind of zigzag to some extent. Come on, come on, cooperate with me. Like that, and then we'll go like that. There we go. That way it looks like it kind of follows some of the flatter portions of this. I mean, it's not perfect, but Eh, it's not too bad actually. We can add some fences to create some uh, aesthetics there. Actually, let's do that now. That sounds like a fun idea. We'll grab a regular fence, kind of these light ones, kind of like we're adding a guardrail to it. So let's go, let's go here to here, loop around, have that end like that. Undo snapping so we can start there. We'll take that. Nope. Nope. Okay. Just no snapping for the time being. Kind of like that, and then have that in there. And then I like the idea of just having it on one side, kind of, but actually that's fine. Yeah, that kind of adds a little bit of a, a guardrail situation. Actually, let's do, let's go from here up a little bit. So it kind of feels like it's a little protected. Just like that. Okay, good start. We're not gonna go too crazy with this. More than anything, I just wanna make sure we establish where our road is kinda gonna go. And I wanna keep this winding playfully. Let's kinda have it go out, but then cut 
this way more. Go ahead and end that there, and then we'll kind of put some pieces of whatever throughout this, this corner here. Sir X got his died a few times. I'm, hold on, we need to figure out what the heck is going on. He's logged out. Okay, never mind. Can't really go to him if he's logged out, but uh, he was having a hard time apparently. I was watching that down in the corner and I saw him die like three or four times. Get good, bro, get good. Just kidding, just kidding. Okay, I kind of like that rock right where it's at already. That's a good rock. We'll just let that rock live there. It's a playful rock. So we'll kind of have the road maybe go around it. We can put some other rocks to kind of add some thematic reasoning to it. So then we want the road to come up this direction and just like that, now it's gonna really get into the fun parts of the region. And I'm thinking, uh, let's go ahead and do this where the road kind of ends and maybe it's just at this point, it's so covered in snow that uh, it's not really visible. Kind of like we did with the sand. And there's not really anybody readily available to kind of uncover it. So we'll kind of add another segment here. And then when we get to, actually, no, no, no. Take that back, get rid of that piece. Let's have this whole corner and turn kind of be non-path. And then it'll kind of restart up here as we get closer to where we think we'll have this, uh, this kind of village segment. So let's have this kind of curve playfully around a little bit and that will give us a kind of an unintentional footprint of what our village will kind of feel like i think is always a good thing to do create some randomness to it and then when you build stuff out it doesn't feel like it's so geometric i don't like towns that look like they're just on a grid maybe a capital city sure but little villages i like them to feel like they were playfully built in a way that was meant to go around portions of the landscape and maybe the city was or not city but the town was added on to over time and so as a result certain people built certain households buildings and stuff to move around other things okay so we'll go like that and then we'll say there's going to be another kind of portion where maybe that's covered up by snow let's grab a road that kind of comes around this way a little bit we're going to add some segments of side questing stuff over here and then this will make kind of a tight path with no road. And then we'll say, I think ultimately, as we get down to this area again, this should kind of be a little bit more on the side of having some green, green to it again. We'll go like that. Open up this meadow a little bit. Let's bring snow back into this corner on this hillside, just a smidge. And bring the mountain back out here a little bit of snow here like so and then we'll kind of have the path come from here just like that okay so simply enough a little bit of time doesn't take too long gotta get the layout of the land some paths in here dangerous portion where we won't have paths players will just kind of have to migrate their way through it uh, figuring it out on their own. We'll put a village section here. I'm thinking like a, uh, a big lumber industry portion here. We'll put tons of trees throughout the whole thing. This is gonna be a fun one to decorate, I think. But I think this is a good foundation, a good start to everything. I like the way the meadows, think of it as like the center of the region is actually the highest portions as far as altitude. So there's gonna be more snow. That's why there's not as much path that's available, but then there's gonna be path available by the town because the people actively will clear the paths to make things easier along with this section here where we'll put kind of a lumber mill area. And then as you come back down this side, you're actually moving down in altitude again and then back to an area where there's less snow. Some green grass gets exposed again. And then I have no idea what this region will be as far as uh, as far as type goes. So like, I don't know if it's, it's probably not, it's not gonna be snow, it's not gonna be desert. We'll figure it out when we get there. But uh, yeah, I want it to end on green on each side. So imagine this is the center of the mountain. Apparently we've won an award too. Oh, best visuals. Do we, do we already have best visuals? I feel like we already had best visuals. Where's overview? Do we have, is there an awards section? Yeah, best visuals by new source XYZ again. I feel like they're just giving us the same award over and over again. All right, now that we've got this field, there's a couple things we need to add on here from terms of atmosphere. 
And I didn't do this with Zephyr, at least in a recording, so I'm, I kind of want to make sure I do it with you guys present. Uh, one, we want to add an effect. We're going to add the snow effect. And that's, I mean, just really easy to create some great atmosphere. So now there's going to be constant snowfall. Play it at normal speed. That's what it'll look like. Even in the areas where there's grass, it's going to be coming down, but that's okay. Imagine it's warmer here. The snow's not going to stick quite yet. And then as you make your way up through here, you're kind of getting the snowfall, but then as soon as you make your way into Zephyr again, the snow is not falling, but you're still gonna have some on the ground. And then as you make your way down, you start to get the normal sand and desert feel again. So a little bit of some climate changes as we go through things. And then, yeah, here I like the way it feels like you're starting to feel like you're entering the mountains, but then really as you get into the depths of things, this is where things gonna get really, really cold feeling. So we'll kind of want to make sure as I do the coloring throughout here that it feels like it still works in this spot so right now the region tint i never know okay so that's just the flooring for the most part so if we go we do go more green that is very awkward i don't like this now what happened okay that's a little better i don't like how it changes everything though i didn't think uh hold on if we go down here Oh, there we go, okay. I was just applying it too heavily on everything. That's what the problem was. Let's go a little darker then maybe, what does that do? And then maybe more on the green side of things. Okay, that's a little better. Maybe too bright and meadowy. Maybe I go on the darker side. Ooh, okay, there we go. That works a lot better. Yeah, I don't want it to be too cheery, but I don't want it to be like ultra snowy. What does that do for the rest of it over here? Okay, it's got some bluish white tint to the snow. It is a little dark. I kind of like how it's a little dark, like there's a cloudiness to it. Can I make it a little darker? What happens if I take this really dark? Well, that just, I don't know if that's doing what I wanted it to do. I actually like it better in there. That looks good here. Kind of got a blue frozen scape feel to it. And then this is like dark, like it's cloudy, uh, which means we need to go into sky a little bit. And I want sky to be like dark gloomy a little bit. Yeah, like it's not quite dark dark, but like there's a lot of clouds because you got a lot of snowfall and then ambient light. Uh, okay, I see what that's doing. So let's go darker here maybe. That makes the shadows a little heavier. Okay, that makes the mountains really dark. I don't know. Well, I guess it kind of depends on where the shadows actually lie because there is, there are shadows, right? Aren't there? Oh, I have shadow quality off. Why is shadow quality off? Oh, well, there we go. Oh, what the heck? Have I just been playing the entire game without shadows? No, I had to have had shadows on. Because there's shadows in Brightwood. Yeah. Although this is crummy quality. I should bump it up a little bit. My PC can handle it. Yeah, high is good. That's a little better. Okay, so... Yeah, was... Uh, apparently I've been wandering through Zephyr without shadows. I st Still not great. Okay, yeah, that's way better. Way, way better. Everything feels better in here now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, what does that do for this region? Because there is there is mountains. I actually do, I do like this a lot. It's dark, but it's like still light enough, kind of. Okay, now how does that feel down here? Yeah, this is good. I really like this. Kind of gives it the approach of like, there kind of is danger approaching. Like, this is not going to be an easy path. Okay, okay, we're getting somewhere. Now, light color, maybe I make the light color, hmm, make it white. But if I make it brighter, what does that do? I'm not sure what that's doing. I make this darker. Oh, okay, it just makes the whole place straight up darker. Well, that's, that's, that's too much. Obviously, we don't want that. I don't want it to feel too dark. 3.5, ooh, that's, that's pretty good. I want it to feel a little, a little brighter than, say, like, East Wash. Yeah, I think I like this. Maybe it maybe a smidge more maybe if I go I was hoping there was a way I could make a create a little more haze to everything maybe if I go ambient light white what does that do it doesn't really create a haze all right we'll bring ambient light back down because I like how that looks and feels but then maybe we just bring the overall brightness up a little bit a light color okay maybe if I bring how did I get the shadows to oh I know it just go like that there we go, okay, so I can control the shadows on the mountain sides with this. Let's bring those down a little bit darker there, but then bring this down so the actual, there we go. 
Now we're talking a little better. So let's bring this down. How dark does that get? Ooh, I like that. Maybe a little lighter, like a 2.0. Good. Yeah, and it's still dark here. Let's try and make this a smidge brighter and a smidge more on the light side of things here. If I go this way, what does that do? Ooh, kind of keeps the grass dark, but applies some white tint to it as well. Yeah, this is, this is feeling just about there. Might tweak it a little bit as we go, but I really like that. I literally like the gray sky. Maybe horizon. Horizon, we go lighter, and then up high, we go darker. Actually, let's not go that light. Maybe there. Ooh, okay, there we go. A little bit lighter up top. Yeah. Yeah, this is feeling right now. All right. I am really happy with where this is so far. So I hope you guys are all ready to start taking the adventure in the direction of Valkyrin, our capital city, as we continue the quest line that's going to take us that direction. Thank you everyone for voting. If you did not get the region that you wanted, do not worry, we will get to those other ones. What I have decided to do is the road to Valkyrin will be ineligible in the next poll. And so as a result, after we finish this mountain pass, we're going to move into the other two regions simultaneously. So we're going to start the other two regions and kind of do this build out of what they look like first, as far as the basic landscape, you know, whether it's going to be mountains like we did and I shaped everything, kind of built the path through. We'll do that for both those other quests after we finish this region. And then from there, we'll vote on just those two regions to figure out exactly which one we want to really dive deep into do some quest building first. And then we will follow up with that second one right after before we choose some other regions to start thinking about migrating to. So for the time being, I am Kyle. This has been that one playthrough of MMORPG Tycoon 2. And I hope to see you all again in the next episode. Have a wonderful day.